Let's broaden things out now with Marshall Beard. He is the COO of Gemini. Joining us on set, bad weather couldn't keep him away. And Marshall, I won't ask you about Tether, but I do want to talk about the spot Bitcoin ETF custodian business because Gemini, you're acting as the custodian on VanX product. Do you have any more ETF custody deals in the works right now? Yes, so we are in discussions with lots of ETF issuers. Uh, right now publicly with Van Eck, and there's another on file called 7RCC Fund, uh, but that is not launched yet. Okay, and uh, we talk about how crowded the spot Bitcoin field is, uh, just from the product standpoint, for, from the custodian standpoint as well, it feels pretty crowded at this point. Uh, we were actually speaking to the Kraken CEO a little bit earlier today that said that Kraken is also, also going to offer a new crypto custody service how do you compete when it comes to being a custodian? Is it just fees alone or how do you actually differentiate yourself? It's not just fees. I mean, that's obviously a part, but there's a lot of different things. It's relationships, it's brand, it's longevity. Um, I like to see newer players in the space. There's only so many that can actually support this ecosystem in the U.S. ETF issuance land. So, um, you know, you compete on a myriad of different ways. Right now, there's only a few. Crypto is stored differently than traditional equities, right? There's a lot of cryptography be behind it. Um, and so, you know, you need a lot of expertise there as well. Uh, do you worry at all that some of that expertise can actually be found in some of the more traditional finance companies, a few that have made it clear they want to be a big, they want to be a big player in the custody business as well? Well, we haven't seen it yet. We've only seen it with Fidelity. Um, and, it, you know, they've been working on that for quite some time. And I believe that they only custody for Bitcoin, no other crypto assets. So, you know, it's probably going to take some time if that's the road. I think we saw NASDAQ mm -hmm. uh, announce that they wanted to do custody, but now they're not doing it anymore. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit here about the reception of the Bitcoin ETFs. And I know it's only been, what, you know, three, three days since uh, uh, we or so since we had the announcement, three business days. Uh, it gets to the question here as to oh, as we move deeper into the year here, how much new adoption are we going to see? Meaning not just the folks who are already in the crypto universe, but maybe those folks who are on the sidelines wondering how the heck do you actually buy this thing? And now they have an avenue in theory to buy it in a much more efficient manner. Yeah. So we're only on the third trading day. I don't have the specific numbers, but I think we've seen about a billion in aggregate net inflows. That's people coming out of GBTC and into some of these new funds. So about a billion, which I think in three days is incredible, right? And so, um, you know, adoption is going to take a little bit. Education is important, you know, getting brokers up to speed, getting wealth managers up to speed, getting these distribution channels. You know, this is going to play out over months and months and months. So it's going to take some time, but there's massive distribution channels now. Well, let's talk about uh, some of the platforms who are saying no. And by some of the platforms, I mean Vanguard, obviously uh, taking a strong stance there, saying that they don't plan to offer crypto ETFs, ETPs, or futures on their platform. What did you make of that? And do you think that we could see other platforms follow Vanguard's lead? I don't really have a take. I don't know their investment thesis. Obviously, they're one of the largest asset managers in the world. Um, you know, people are going to have different uh, ideas behind this. And so I think it is a little old school thinking. I think, you know, this is a new technology. You see people come around over time. They probably will come around over time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see the, the day. Uh, it's, it has been interesting to watch their evolution when it comes to commodity ETFs, for example. But let's talk a little bit about are the her price questions action. tough. She's, you know, she, she does. She practices her questions on me first. Before. I look in They're the great. mirror and I yell at myself. <laughs> uh, but I want to talk about the price action. I want to get your take on what has been happening with the price of Bitcoin, because I'm sure people in the crypto industry are tired of hearing the phrase sell the news event. But is that what we saw? A little bit. I think at its peak, we saw 49,000. I think right now it's trading around 43. So there was a little bit of sell off. But, you know, Bitcoin was up, I think, 160 percent last year, um, you know, up a couple percent today, I believe. So, you know, I'm not worried about right now. I think what we see today is pretty orderly. Like, I like to see this with the ETFs launching, you know, the operations between the issuers and the custodians and the APs is all working fine, what looks like, right? Which is good. It shows maturity, but it seems orderly, a little boring, actually. <laughs> it's interesting, too. I'm curious as to what you made out of the actual decision itself, the meaning the language, and more importantly, the statement that Gensler put out alongside of it here. It seemed to suggest this idea, obviously, from his perspective, that it was kind of like grudgingly, OK, fine, we have to approve this because the judge isn't going to give me any leeway. But he did kind of leave that door open for some sort of broader regulation, whether that's going to come under his purview or somebody else's, who knows. But is that something that you're preparing for? 
Yes, of course. I mean, yeah. it's something that we're asking for, mm. right? We've been doing this for a decade now, and you know, the U.S. does not have a broad crypto uh, regulation framework. Yeah. Where, you know, so we are looking forward to that. Um, I think it happens probably still yeah. 12, 18 months away. Did, did it surprise you at all? And I know that he, the hand was kind of forced because of the legal, uh, because of the lawsuit. But did it surprise you that they didn't maybe have that framework ready to go before they made these approvals? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, other countries have uh, issued crypto specific frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't a new thing. It's been around for quite some time. So, yeah. yeah. All right, Marshall, really great uh, to have you on set. Really appreciate your time as well. That is Marshall Beard, of course, the COO of Gemini.